Greetings, everybody. This is Pastor Sullivan at Holy Cross Lutheran Church in Kerrville, Texas. I'm glad you're here with me for this episode of ATP Ask the Pastor. Today's question. Dear Pastor, in one video you say that the Roman Catholic Mass is a re-sacrificing of Christ. It is a sacrifice, but it's not a re-sacrificing of Christ. On what basis do you say that Roman Catholics re-sacrifice Christ during each Mass? All right, so the key to understanding the, um, what is happening in the Roman Catholic Mass and why Lutherans reject their sacrifice of the Mass, you have to understand that there are two types of sacrifices. There is a propitiatory sacrifice and there is a Eucharistic sacrifice. A propitiatory sacrifice is a work that makes satisfaction for guilt, sin, and punishment. It atones for sins. It appeases God's wrath. It merits forgiveness uh, for oneself or for others. A Eucharistic sacrifice, on the other hand, doesn't merit the forgiveness of sins, but it is for the giving of thanks by one whose sins have been forgiven. So the Greek word transliterated, Eucharist, um, is Eucharisteo, which means I give thanks. So a Eucharistic sacrifice, they, it includes things like the preaching of the gospel, faith itself, prayer, thanksgiving, confession, uh, even the afflictions of believers because they're born in faith and thanksgiving to God. And really all good works of Christians done in faith are then Eucharistic sacrifices. Rome, however, teaches that the Mass or the Lord's Supper is both a propitiatory sacrifice and a Eucharistic sacrifice of sorts, while Lutherans believe it's only a Eucharistic sacrifice. So let's look uh, more closely than the Roman Catholic teaching about the sacrifice of the Mass. When we go to the Council of Trent, the, uh, the 22nd session, chapter 2, we see that it is in fact a re-sacrificing of Christ. It says, For as much as in this divine sacrifice which is celebrated in the Mass, that the same Christ is contained and immolated or sacrificed in an unbloody manner, who once offered himself in a bloody manner upon the altar of the cross, the Holy Synod teaches that this sacrifice is truly propitiatory and that by means thereof this is effected, that we obtain mercy and find grace in seasonable aid if we draw nigh unto God, contrite and penitent, with a sincere heart and upright faith, with fear and reverence. For the Lord, appeased by the oblation thereof and granting the grace and gift of penitence, forgives even heinous crimes and sins. For the victim is one and the same. The same now offering by the ministry of priests, who then offered himself on the cross, the manner alone of offering being different. The fruits indeed of which, oblation, uh, of that bloody one to it are received most plentifully through this unbloody one. So far is this latter from derogating in any way uh, from that former oblation. Wherefore, not only for the sins, punishments, satisfactions, and other necessities of the faithful who are living, but also for those who are departed in Christ, who are not yet as fully purified, it is rightly offered agreeably to a tradition of the apostles. What this means is that Rome understands the Lord's Supper to be a sacrificing of Jesus, quote, that same Christ is contained and immolated in an unbloody manner. So Christ is sacrificed at each Mass in an unbloody way, thus the priest is re-sacrificing Christ at every Mass. In fact, the only difference between the sacrifice of the Mass and Christ's sacrifice on the cross is who's doing it. Uh, it was originally Christ at the once-for-all sacrifice upon the cross, but now the priest is offering Christ once again in an unbloody way. Uh, otherwise, these two sacrifices are identical. Each Mass is a repetition of Christ's sacrifice on the cross because the celebrant offers the same Christ as the victim and propitiatory sacrifice. And so by teaching that the Mass is a uh, propitiatory sacrifice, then Rome teaches that each time it's celebrated, it's earning the forgiveness of sins and appeasing God's wrath. And as an atoning sacrifice, then it can be applied to the living and apparently to the dead who are not yet as fully purified, that is, in purgatory. Now, modern Roman Catholicism, it de-emphasizes uh, the Mass as a propitiatory sacrifice, and it emphasizes instead the belief that the, uh, that the sacrifice of the Mass uh, merely perpetuates Christ's sacrifice on the cross. In fact, the language of the Catechism uh, says that it makes present the one sacrifice of Christ the Savior and includes the Church's offering. So, the language of making Christ's sacrifice 
on the cross present for the communicants, both living and dead, uh, comes from that same session of the Council of Trent, session 22, but chapter 1. And Christ instituted the supper so that, quote, he might leave to his own beloved spouse the church, a visible sacrifice, such as the nature of man requires, whereby that bloody sacrifice, once to be accomplished on the cross, might be represented, and the memory thereof remain even unto the end of the world, and its salutary virtue be applied to the remission of those sins we daily commit. So according to the Council of Trent, the Mass presents Christ's once-for-all sacrifice on the cross to all the communicants and to anyone else for whom the Mass is said, while simultaneously re-sacrificing Christ to make atonement for the sins of the living and the dead. And then, of course, then, it is an offering back to God, and therefore a, a Eucharistic sacrifice, they say. Scripturally, however, the Mass or the Lord's Supper can only be a Eucharistic sacrifice, a sacrifice of praise. Uh, and that's because there is only one propitiatory sacrifice for sins that appeases God's wrath, and that is Christ's death upon the cross. You know, there's no need for, for a weekly or for a daily propitiatory sacrifice in the church because Christ's death made propitiation for the sins of the entire world. St. Paul says, Hebrews 7.27, that Christ offered a sacrifice for sins once for all when he offered himself up. He says in Hebrews 9, 12, that with his own blood he entered the most holy place once for all, having obtained eternal redemption. And in Hebrews 9, 28, Christ was offered once to bear the sins of many. So to teach that Christ, it's necessary for him to be sacrificed again, even in an unbloody, mystic manner, treats Christ's once for all sacrifice upon the cross as incomplete at best. If the sacrifice of the Mass is, quote, a true and propitiatory sacrifice offered to God, a sacrifice by which we obtain mercy, by the oblation of which the Lord is appeased, from Trent 22, chapter 2, then Christ's sacrifice ceases to be what it is, namely, the only and all-sufficient sacrifice for our sins. Nor can the Mass be an unbloody sacrifice of Christ that appeases God, because St. Paul writes in Hebrews 9.22, that without the shedding of blood, there is no remission. And so an unbloody sacrifice doesn't appease God and doesn't expiate sin. Nor is there any need then with all this to teach that the Lord's Supper is a propitiatory sacrifice so that it can apply Christ's benefits of the cross to us. The Lord Jesus gives the communicant his very body and blood in with and under the bread and wine of the Lord's Supper and when that is received in faith, Christ then gives the benefits that he earned and acquired upon the cross, he gives them to the communicant and applies them to the communicant. Making the Lord's Supper into a propitiatory sacrifice, it cheapens his one propitiatory death of Christ upon the cross. You know, claiming that it, that it simply applies the benefits that Christ earned on the cross to the living and the dead, it replaces faith uh, with, with, this, with this new sacrifice. Uh, ma making the Lord's Supper into an offering that the congregation that offers back to God makes the Lord's Supper into our work instead of God's work, Christ's work, by which he gives us his very body and blood and the benefits that he earned for us. Then. So Lutherans view the, sacrament, or view the Lord's Supper chiefly rather as a sacrament, God's work by which he gives us Christ's earned benefits. By viewing the Lord's Supper, though, as an unbloody sacrifice offered to God, they treat it as a work which we offer to God in order to afford him honor. But in spite of what Trent says, nowhere has Christ or his apostles taught the church to offer the Lord's Supper back to God as an unbloody sacrifice to make propitiation for the sins of the living or the dead. So what kind of sacrifice is the Lord's Supper then? Well, it's a Eucharistic sacrifice. Uh, but not as Rome teaches, that we offer the unbloody Christ back to God. Lutherans confess in the Apology of the Augsburg Confession, After conscience, encouraged by faith, has perceived from what terrors it is freed, then indeed it fervently gives thanks for the benefit and passion of Christ, and uses the ceremony itself to the praise of God, in order that by this obedience to show its gratitude, and testifies that it holds in high esteem the gifts of God, Thus, the ceremony becomes a sacrifice of praise. It's an apology, Article 24, Paragraph 74. The, the Eucharistic sacrifice 
is receiving Christ's body and blood in true faith. Because it's by faith that God wishes to be worshipped, that we receive from him those things which he promises and offers to us. You know, we partake of the sacrament firmly believing Christ's words, that it is his true body and true blood, and thereby he gives us the forgiveness of all of our sins and the promise of everlasting life. In that faith, then, we simultaneously offer to God not the Lord's Supper, but rather our praise and our thanksgiving. Because here in the Lord's Supper, he has forgiven us and he has given us all of Christ's benefits that he earned for us at his once for all sacrifice upon the cross. Our entire lives then become Eucharistic sacrifices by which we live in faith, daily putting to death the old man so that the new man may daily rise to live and increase in righteousness, purity, confession, prayer, and good works. And that is the only way in which the Lord's Supper is a sacrifice. We'll see you next time on ATP.